And we're off to the races. We are. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas. And if you're watching this, you are a gasaholic. Along tonight with us is my lovely wife, Peg. And with us, as always, Randy Cardoon from Talking About Cars. And not so not so lovely, but that Rapunzel thing is still yes. going on, I got to hey. tell you. I got. I almost got a ponytail now. Do you really? Really? Yeah. And so, what's your wife have to say about that, Peg? It doesn't bother me a bit. <laughs> it's not as long as hers. Yeah, okay. I know. It's not as long as mine. Yeah. Okay. So hers right. is longer than mine. All right. Very good. Ponytails. Okay. So we are here for another night of gas. But if you're not watching it right now, you're going to be watching it recorded. You'll see it on YouTube, Facebook, and many other places. Let's go over our recap, what we did car-wise this past weekend. And Peg, ladies first. Well, you know where I've been at because I've been wherever you're at. <laughs> That's true. You you shared the passenger seat. I know, but I wanted to give you a chance I know. to talk about yes, it yourself. We, I, um, <laughs> we enjoyed some time on Saturday and Sunday, both uh, at uh, the Murphy Auto Museum in Oxnard. Saturday, the uh, Ventura Nationals had their reliability run, and after they were done with their cruise uh, through Ventura, Ojai, and down through Santa Paula, they came out to Oxnard to uh, take a respite for a bit before I think some of them headed out for the, was it the Coachman's Cruise that later that evening? There was evening? a Coachman's Cruise that evening, and then they were having some festivities in Ventura themselves. Okay. And that, and so it was really nice to get out and see some of the uh, great cars. And and I actually got online and saw some of the pictures they were posting of the line of cars that were out traveling together. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody on the freeway and some of the areas going, wow, what are all these cars doing there? Yeah, and what are these fools driving in 100 degree weather for? Because where they were. <laughs> It was 100 degrees up in the Ojai area, and they had a lot of breakdowns on the way over heating yeah. issues. So yeah. we stayed in cool Oxnard, where it was, like it did 80, get up to maybe 80. Eight, no, it was about 85 there. Oh, 85, yeah, a heat wave for us. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, Sunday was the uh, Muscles and Mojo at the Murphy Auto Museum. So it started off a little earlier than getting there at noon, so we got the cooler morning to have some cars gather there. And uh, that was really good to see. Yeah, it was a good turnout because with the uh, Venture Nationals coming through, there's probably a couple hundred cars between the parking lot and the streets. It, it was just packed. And it was all sorts of cars, whether, you know, Datsun 510s, uh, muscle cars, collectible antiques, sports cars, uh, a brand new, two brand new C8 Corvettes. Yeah. They were, you know, they were just cool and they were parked front and center so everyone could see we had our car there and uh it was great i which, got to which look, car did you have we brought out the plymouth oh okay so we've been rotating cars in and out of the garage yeah. the plymouth and the plymouth was uh, our mode of transportation this weekend by the way have you seen uh, this week's tmpcc or this month's tmpcc no not uh, newsletter you're in it i am you, you and johnny martinez are in it and you know I, if i can let me uh, just mention the headline that is in yours. Here we go. Let me go back up to the top here. I happen to have it on my phone. Here it is. And this is the headline, uh, which is basically shows your picture session that you put on Facebook, if I'm not mistaken, okay. where Johnny Martinez, our good pal, and a really great guy that does that. Pinstriping. Pinstriper, yes, I knew that. He's a this forger. Is what yeah, yeah, this no. is what it says. It says, Martinez stripes Bex Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the funny thing is, they show a picture of, and, and I don't know if you could see it here, but they show not only Johnny uh, pinstriping the trunk, uh, you and him uh, at the tail of the car, but it shows what he did and an excellent job, by the way, right over your uh, taillight yep. or the stoplight. Yeah, the stopping stop light. light. Yeah. And of course, you'll notice the stopping light. And I, you know, I'm sure Bob has explained this before, but one of them looks like it's a uh, it's a Dodge stoplight. Right. Whereas the car itself is a Plymouth. Right. 
and that, there's the story with that. But it's funny because in the story they mention you have this Plymouth that everybody knows about, but in the headline, apparently the headline writer <laughs> wrote Dodge. So Beck, you have a Dodge. Congratulations. A, it's a plodge. It's plodge. a plodge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what they call it in Canada and yeah. other places because plodges are basically Plymouths. And uh, what Chrysler would do for other countries is they would put a Dodge front clip or a DeSoto front clip on the front of a Plymouth. Yeah, and in this case, it was simply a rebadged Plymouth. They changed mm -hmm. the grill to look like a Dodge egg crate grill. But in my car, it still has the front of the Plymouth, but it's got the back of the Dodge. And that just to confuse people. And it did. Well, wait a minute now. Let's. Right, well, it's got the back of your car is not a Dodge, though. No, the lights are. Well, the trunk. Is the, the trunk. trunk actually part of it, or is the, the yeah. trunk come off a Dodge? Well, the, the, no, the trunk is still a Plymouth, but with Dodge badging and, t and brake light. Okay. Yes, the Plymouth, the Plymouth light actually has the uh, Mayflower imprinted in it, whereas That's the right. Dodge is smooth. And in just to make this thing completely murky, because so many other people have done that, where they, they take the Plodge deal that they have in Canada. And, for example, in Australia, they will take – uh, basically that plodge angle. But then when it got to cars, I want to say the 1967 through 69 years, six, some, somewhere along that way, the they actually ran Plymouths, at least what we know as Plymouths, mm -hmm. 67, 68. And those were Dodges in Australia. Yeah, they and were before, branded as Dodges. Yeah, and before that, in the, the early 50s, they actually called them the Soto Diplomats. That's and right. also sold them in, in Europe as DeSoto Diplomats. And they were basically DeSoto style grills in Plymouth with some more chrome. And if you really want to blow your mind, yes. you go, look in, it, go look uh, and research. I think they call it. Is it all, not all state, but all pro, something like that. There's a all-star anyway but there's a there's a website that deals in australian vehicles that are mm. come from america and they would take for example and i was trying to figure it out i believe it's a 1953 dodge no mm -hmm. 1953 plymouth and that body style lasted until 1961 with various incantations of they actually grafted 56 plymouth taillights on it and then DeSoto taillights were grafted on the back, same 53 body, yeah. and that turned into Chrysler Royals. Uh, oh. I mean, it's, it's that, and if you ever go through uh, and look in Brazil, Ford in Brazil, yeah. that whole thing is fascinating to me. Cars yeah, it, that we don't have. Well, and, and some of the things are strange, too, that something went out of production here, but stayed in production, like you're talking about this Plymouth. They did the same thing with the Ford Falcon. The first Absolutely. generation Ford Falcon went away here in 1963. That was the last of the round body Falcons. But you and I saw a guy from, what was it, Argentina? Argentina, yeah. Or, Chile. Drove, all, one of the or two. Chile. drove all the way up to the Grand National Roadster Show with it. And he said, oh, it's a 1982. And we're like, oh, it's a 1962. What's he talking about? But it, it was stayed in production. Australia did the same thing with the first generation Falcons. Uh they did it. Uh, one of the things I found, I had a Willie station wagon for a while. And when I was doing my research in Brazil, Ford sold that and they called it a Maverick. Right. So it was, you know, the, the names changed, but the body stayed the same. Didn't we talk about this? I believe where Maverick's coming back as a truck. Yeah, that's true. We talked with the gentleman from Ford Motorsports. That's right. And they're uh, right. going to reintroduce a compact Ford pickup truck, and they're going to call it a Maverick. And the Maverick guys are going, no, <laughs> sacrilege. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. And it's going to be a, a, a front-wheel drive pickup truck, which, mm -hmm. yeah, and the last time we saw a front-wheel drive pickup truck in the States was a Chrysler product and the Volkswagen, the Chrysler uh, Dodge mm -hmm. Omni. Oh, the, the rampage. rampage. Rampage, yeah. Yeah. Rampage, yeah. yeah, a little front drive pickup truck. It didn't go over all that well. Volkswagens Ooh. didn't go over all that well, but the Volkswagen's a prized possession now. People are, are looking for those. But, and, and if you're a Chrysler guy and you happen to have a decent Rampage truck, it, so few were made, really, that uh, you have a real gem in your collection. You really yeah. do. 
and I've seen a couple that have been converted to make them look like the Shelby. So they've oh. got the blue, really? uh, yeah, the blue paint, the silver stripe with the Shelby embroidered seats and the Shelby wheels. Not very difficult to do, but they're interesting. Uh, not too bad a performance vehicle. You didn't get the turbo in the truck, right? But you got the two point uh, four or two point six liter Mitsubishi V or Mitsubishi inline four cylinder. Yeah, if, if the El Camino or the uh, the um, Ranchero is considered by you to be too much of a truck, yeah. The Rampage in the Volkswagen yep. will do, do you well <laughs> right there. We, we, I, I had a guy when I worked for a, a other car company, one of our reps was given Volkswagens for their company cars. And they gave him a diesel powered Volkswagen pickup. He said it had cruise control. He bought it at Lowe's. It was a brick. <laughs> we only had a top speed of about 70 miles an hour. So I didn't know was, low sold cars. How did yeah, it? Well, you know, he took Whoa, the, I got to start yeah, going over there. Go over there. You never know what you're going to find in the wow. heart. On the gas pedal and you're on. Yeah, gas Holy. pedal. So a brick on the gas how pedal. How do you run it through the express line? That's what I like. I mean, how do you check out? At the, the Check it out yourself. Turn Can it you sideways. That's that self-check. Uh, yeah, yeah self-check out. Yeah. I guess it depends on where they put the uh, bar code. You know. Yeah, that's true. That would be... Yeah. And whether or not there are any drinks in the barcode. But let me tell you, yeah. I'll be here all show. Well, well, or, yeah. maybe, all right. or maybe not. I don't know at the rate I'm going. Go ahead. Uh, we do appreciate you being here listening to us here on Gas, the Great American Auto Scene, part of Two Guys Productions. And as you may know, Randy and I team up and do uh, Two Guys Productions, but we have two shows. And Randy's show, two talking tired about cars. Guys two tired guys, that's right. Yeah. And you Randy's can... show, Talking about cars. Yes. Top 100 in a bunch of countries. By the way. Yes. You know, we're now like number, I just saw this today. I don't think I've ever been in this country before. We were in the U.S. You know, it's funny. We're, we're in the U.S. very fleetingly in the top yeah. 200 because there are so many really cool podcasts for automotive uh, fans in the U.S. But we're uh, in the top 200 for Australia. Yeah. Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Hmm. Um, also Canada. Canada, we just showed up out of the clear blue in the 20s one day. And now oh. we're down to about 50. And how about this? I kid you not, we are now in the top 25 of Norway. Oi, Sven and Ali like us. I suddenly feel an urge to eat pickled herring. Oi, oh no. Or locks, <laughs> one of the two. Uh, well, I, you got to keep your bagel safe, put locks on it. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> gluten-free, uh, gluten-free bagels. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure that one out. All right. Well, yeah, how about that? We were, we were actually, uh, actually, I was actually talking to somebody. In fact, if you're in Sweden right now, I got to yeah. ask you this, or even Norway. Mm -hmm. I got. I'm looking for someone who speaks English mm -hmm. relatively well. Accents, no big deal. Yeah. We, we, Bob and I, want to get somebody in Sweden, the Netherlands, or is Norway in the Netherlands? You, you yeah, my, I'm not good on geography. <laughs> Denmark. Yeah. Somewhere along those lines to talk about the car scene in those respective countries. Because, for example, I sold a car, yeah. a 64 Dodge Polara, uh, and I sold it to a guy uh, who served as a go-between, and he ended up selling it to another guy in Sweden. And with some help of some friends, uh, we actually tracked it down and it looks great. They kind of did a Ram chargers clone out of it. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. So I've put out and I've kind of put it out there in the ether that I want them to come on the show, but I don't know how good their English is, but uh, we, but they always show, uh, and there's a Facebook page um, that talks about and shows all these classic cars in Sweden. So I'm thinking it would be great to have them talk about the cars in Sweden, how they got them, um, their experiences with the cars, what their goals are. And we would like to kind of do that from a world perspective, because apparently our podcasts are bigger elsewhere than they are here in the U.S. Yeah. And I'm fine with that, actually. I, I don't have a what? problem. I can just see us being invited over to Sweden to host a car show. No one will understand what we're saying, but they'll be laughing like mad. Exactly. That's you, just... We can get Jonas and uh, Jessica. And Jessica, yes. And they drive; they're daily drivers, except in the snow. 
Oh, that's right. They're in 50, Sweden. Why don't 50, we get them on? We will get them on. I'll send them an email. We'll get them out because they drive 55, 57 Chevys as daily drivers. So, you say you that know, in plural? They have more than yeah, one? Yeah, they have more than one. They have they multiple. They here and they buy them and they take them over there. Yeah. And they love and when they, the weather's clear enough that they can take them out. Do they sell them? Or no, they drive they, them. They just enjoy them. They may how keep many them did they have? Uh, last I checked, I think two or three. And, it's, and they just got one running, so it may be four. But wow. they've got a bunch of cars, and they are car nuts. They come over for the Hot Rod Reunion, the March meet. and uh, They were here for SEMA last year. Yeah. yeah. And they, they come out all the time. They are hardcore car people. And uh, we'll definitely get them on. We'll get them on for the next show of gas and uh, chat with them. Or talking about cars, it might be a good one. Especially, as, you know, since talking about cars has got a better recognition over there, we'll get them on there for that. Well, I'd always love also to get, um, and I guess I could ask them this later, but, uh, you know, there are podcasters there yep. that are into cars. And I guess if we can find some podcasters that do car shows in that area, we'd love to have them on as long that as would they be good. speak English. And yeah, local least, experts. You know, local experts would be great. All right. And uh, cool. yeah. pseudo personality. So that's, that's it. Kind of like we are. More Suit, pseudo yes. than personalities, but we are pseudo personalities. Oh, you have big personalities, believe me. Uh, Want to see my personality? <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. No one wants to see your personality, <laughs> Bob. Oh, okay, I mean, well, hey. except for Peg, but that's that's when the cameras aren't on, okay? You know, most people are just listening to the audio anyway. It's not, they can't see it. So it's, you know, uh, it's all. Okay, we'll move along. All right. Hey, one of the things we've talked about in the past, and uh, we are enthusiasts about, we're car enthusiasts, but there's a pony car craze. And I say pony car, although most people now call them muscle cars. But starting with the Mustang, the term pony car was coined for that type of car. Short deck, long hood area. The Mustang, though, was not the first of these pony cars. The 1964 Barracuda beat the Mustang to market by two weeks. Problem was nobody noticed because Ford just locked on to all forms of media at the time, radio and TV, and just saturated the uh, airwaves with ads for Mustangs. But after that, the Camaro, the Firebird, the larger Barracudas, the Challenger, the, and others, the Javelin, the AMX all came out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about which was our favorites or what we liked about the pony car era. And I still call them pony cars, even though they've got big engines with lots of horsepower now. So why don't we start off with Peg again and uh, see what her take is on this. Although I got a feeling it has something to do with a blue oval. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, Mustangs were in my, uh, my, my, my background. Uh, I, I drove a Mustang. I had, we had a 65 Mustang early on. And um, I really enjoyed that. But uh, as far as, um, you know, growing up, the, the Mustang was very popular. And you saw a lot of them. They, were, they, they sold more, so therefore it was more recognizable. Um, but I think as I was reflecting back in high school, uh, I saw a lot more Camaros. I think that was really what the kids were gravitating to in their in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, because uh, at that point, I think the Mustangs kind of lost some of their luster and and they were a little bit bigger and and the smog laws that I think a lot of the high school kids that I, I grew up with uh, really uh, gravitated more to the Camaros and Firebirds. And I, I would have to say probably because movies and stuff also uh, featured them a little bit more. But overall, I like the Mustang. I like the the body styling and and that of the Mustang and uh, personally I've had a Mustang so you know it yeah Fords are having have you know got that blue oval in my head I guess you know <laughs> all right Randy what about you this is a difficult decision because I remember when the Camaros came out it, it to me I don't know you, you know they have a few years lead time before they actually come out so the Mustang came out in 64 and a half ish Yep. Camaro came out in 67 and the 68. And to me, it basically looks so square. And I, and I think I mean that both ways because from a viewpoint of, it was boxy to me, 
uh, it, it had performance, I'll give it that, but it looked like it was rushed into production because, oh my God, Ford has this and we've got to put something together. That's the way it came off over to me. What I liked about it was the Firebird came out of the Camaro and while neither car really wowed me at the, any one point to begin with, I think it later grew into its own. Um, the Camaro had the 69 Camaro. Um, in fact, that was Marta, my wife's car. Her first car was a 69 Camaro and she kind of is never forgiving her grandparents for the day that as a golfer, and she went away to the University of Texas to play golf, that the grandparents decided, eh, she needs, a, she needs a car you can put a bag of golf clubs in. So they traded the Camaro for a 74 Plymouth Duster. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I haven't let her forget that. Uh, but still, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a thing. And now I don't mean to hog everything here, but I was also comparing that against the possibility of a Mopar. Mm -hmm. a Barracuda or later Cuda and the Dodge Challenger. Oddly enough, I'm a Mopar guy and I'm yeah. not a big Challenger fan from the older Challengers. To me, the, the, the Cuda and the Barracuda was actually, I think, a better looking car, mm -hmm. even though it was basically the same body style. But um, I thought that was a better looking car. And then if you go back and take a look at the uh, situation with Mopar and relevance in the world of um, media, mm -hmm. you start taking a look at how Dodge got themselves involved with so many TV cars. Oh, yeah. You know, everything from the Dukes of Hazard and all these other cars, the Challenger from, oh, what was that movie? A lot, or Gone in 60 Seconds. No, I'm thinking of no, the one. that's a Mustang. I'm talking about the one that, uh, the white one that just raced all over the place. Gosh, what am I, I'm blanking on it now. And Fast and Furious? Are, what was it? Fast no, and not, Furious? No, no, not Fast and Furious, but it was no, one where well, he was, you, he's trying to transport the car. And yeah, and he ends up, spaces. yeah, he ends up killing himself in the car or something like that. Answer. Yeah. Not white lightning, it was. Oh, um, we'll, we'll think about it. Everybody's again. screaming at the TV right now. I'm going to have to look this up. But yeah. uh, let's see, what else is on here, though? And, and there are a lot of big cars, too. Uh, Nash Bridges. Nash Bridges yeah. had the Cuda uh, that Don Johnson drove around in. Uh, let's see. There was a lot of Challengers. Uh, Chargers I don't want to talk about. There were just a lot of really cool cars out there that – that uh, were used by uh, Chrysler and Plymouth and Dodge. So I guess what I'm saying is it's nice to talk about Chevy and Firebird because the Firebird obviously had uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Right. And also Kit. But uh, I'm, I lean toward the Mopars just because they were so out there. You saw them everywhere. And like Peggy was saying, you know, you, you can always see – um, certain cars out there. And even though you have the other car, you're always longing for this other one because you see it everywhere. Yeah. All right. Vanishing Point was the movie. Vanishing Point. There you go. Yeah. With the White Challenger. Uh, Barry, Barry, Newman. Yeah, Barry Newman. Yeah. Barry Newman. 440 with a four speed or a, or something. Like, and they wrecked a whole bunch of them in that. Now it's considered well, sacrilege. Well, that's because Chrysler was selling them a dime a dozen. I mean, how many did the Dukes of Hazards crush? Come on. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but that wasn't Dodge that promoted that. That that was that was something after the fact. But yeah, they went through hundreds of Dodge Chargers, which puts a a bounty on them, I guess. Now now they're yeah. uh, they're more expensive because there were so few used, and because of the image they got. Not many people complain now about the image of the uh, the flag on the roof, but it's still the iconic Dodge Charger that gets mm -hmm. the attention. And they are valuable cars at this point in time. All right, I'm going to be a little bit different, though. And as much as I liked, and you and I talked earlier when we discussed doing this topic, I was really enamored with the overhead cam six-cylinder that Pontiac came out with. And I always thought Pontiac was a little bit ahead of the game technically over the Camaros. But the cars that really struck me as being interesting were the AMCs. I like the Javelin, and I like the AMX. And the AMX was just a shorter javelin basically uh but they still had some interesting style in the later javelins that were used in trans am racing by the penske team i really like those the big bulbous fender flares uh lower down the red white and blue paint jobs on them those things were exciting to me 
401 cubic inch big blocks, 390 big blocks. They were no slouch. They were pretty fast cars at the time. And being an AMC, they really didn't get the recognition or the Not at all. That, they, that they really needed. But I'm, you know, like I drive a Plymouth, a 1948 Plymouth, where in the hot rodding sector, a Ford or a Chevy is the car of choice. And I've got the Plymouth. So that's where I gravitate to the odd rods or the oddball cars. And in this case, the Javelins and AMXs. I got a ride in an AMX. I worked uh, at Disney Studios for a while, and my supervisor had an AMX. And that was the first time I'd gotten a ride in one of those things. And that was, it was total, total sensory. It was noisy. It had a four speed. It rode rock hard, but man, it set you back in the seat. What year was it? It was a 1968. Yeah. When so, they used to have, when they used to have the hot colors yeah. and they were all matched to the fenders. Yeah. I'm sorry, bumper. not the fenders, the bumpers. The bumpers. Yeah. His, yeah. Was, his was slime green. And slime green. It had yeah. a, you know, Kermit would have loved it. Yeah. Uh, it had a black stripe going down the center. There was no chrome on the car. It had a 390 and it moved. It mm -hmm. was just great. I loved that car. Always wanted one, but never got to the point of actually getting one. Then again, pony cars. The only pony car I've ever owned was a Camaro. And I bought it in a, uh, I was a, one of these rental agency or rental uh, storage places. No one else wanted it. So I got it for $50. What year? 67. Oh. It, it was a six cylinder car and the line was out. I had it towed home and I straightened the alignment out. I got the car running, cleaned it up a bit and turned it, just sold it. It, it didn't interest me. Now I did, I take that back. I did have another Camaro. I had a 71 with a big block mm -hmm. and I go, I can't afford to feed this thing. <laughs> and it was a four speed car. And I'm thinking now, what was I thinking? It was oh, a cool Bob. car. You just had this thing where you dreamt of standing in a gas line somewhere, just letting yeah. your car run. Yeah. And being late yeah. for everything. Yeah. Big block, four speed, 70 Camaro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect car for me when I was driving 50 miles one way to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No. In fact, you were talking about the AMX. I remember looking for a car back then because my 64 Dodge was nearing its end. And one of the cars that actually caught my attention, although it was a weird shape, was the Gremlin. Oh, yeah. And not just the Gremlin, but the Gremlin X. Right. And this one, I believe, was the um, Levi... Levi edition. Jeans yeah. edition. <laughs> yeah. Where you actually get in it, and the whole upholstery is nothing but jeans. It's all, you know, that... All denim. Jean material. Yeah, all yeah. denim material. And they lasted and, longer than the pants. And, and believe it or not, it had more room than you would think for a car that didn't have a trunk. It was like right. somebody... Because back then, every car had a trunk as big as a gremlin. You could fit yeah. the gremlin in the trunk. That's just the way it was. But... Uh, when I was looking, I distinctly remember just at the curiosity of having a car that cut off just like that, but the front of it still looked like an AMC Hornet. Yeah. And I and, thought, well, that's interesting. Yeah, not a pony car, but I agree with you 100%. And I love the Gremlin. A buddy of mine, when we were in college, had one, and it was a three-speed stick, six-cylinder, Gremlin X, it didn't have the Levi edition. It had black vinyl interior that you stuck to on sunny days. But it was cool, and it got great gas mileage. And then later on, when I got into uh, racing, uh, they were king on the road courses against the other cars in the Radial Challenge series. They had so much low-end torque. The long straightaway courses, they didn't do real well on because everyone would pass them going down the straightaway. They ran out of, out of uh, air at about mm -hmm. 4,300, 4,500 RPM. But pulling out of a turn and handling, they were excellent. They had very quick steering, short wheelbase. They were a comfortable car, and you could seat four to five people easily in them. Uh, although I was so small at the time, uh, we were on our way back from Vegas, and the other guys wanted to sleep, so they put me behind the back seat. In <laughs> partial shell and you area. fit? And you I fit? Fed. Yeah, at 120 wow. pounds, I fit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I, when was that? Uh, it was about <laughs> a few decades ago. Yeah, a few decades ago. Back in college. Me, and, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. That was in but, the days when. But as far as all the pony cars, the Mustang yes. has been the longest in production. It's the only one that stayed in production. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's been it's in production. Since production. It's, 
the Barracuda was first. Yeah. And then they, that hung around until late 70s, they kill it? late 70s at one point. Yeah, they um, killed it in the late 70s when they killed the original style Challenger. The original Challenger only ran for like five years. I want to say the, the original style Challenger and the original style Barracuda, I think that died in the early 70s, wasn't it? Uh, 74, 74, maybe 74. 74 I don't yeah, know. I think about the same time the big but bumpers Can you out. go out and buy a Barracuda today, a 20, uh, 2020 Barracuda today? No. If you, no. You buy a twenty kit on it. But that changed, though. I <laughs> yeah. mean, it has there is no been Plymouth. In, That's in the thing. Constant yeah. production. I mean, yeah. yes, the Mustangs has gone through many re reiterations of its body style, and it went through all the being bigger in the '70s, and then coming back being smaller, and kind of uh, uh, until they got the five O in it, they finally, you know, really uh, came back to being a performance car. Um, that but the mustang has been tried and true and and doesn't matter what decade you want to buy you can buy a mustang yes you can i'll give you that yeah i mean for example the challengers today i think if they uh, and to this day everybody wonders is there going to be a cuda coming back as a dodge or will it come back as a chrysler yeah no chrysler has toyed yeah. with that idea but once fiat took over uh, the plans got shelved so mm -hmm. Who knows what's going to happen? And we've talked about this before, Randy, because you've got a new Challenger or new body well, style. Well, uh, it looks relative. like a, it, it looks, looks like a new, like yeah. a new Challenger. Which they haven't changed since they were introduced. Exa in, well, uh, they lights. made one major change. <clears throat> one major change. In 1995, they went with the split grill. Kind of like made it look like a 71 Challenger as opposed yeah. to the pre-95, 94 and earlier, which was basically the 70 Challenger. What did I say? 1990s. Was I'm 2000. sorry. Yeah. Go back to 2014 and earlier, which yeah. was basically the 70 Challenger. Right. Park type. And so they came in, they completely redid the dashboard, mm -hmm. which is much nicer. They um, redid the front end. They kind of did some body mods. And, but for the most part, the beauty of it all is you can own a 1995 Challenger like I do. 2005. 2015 <laughs> Challenger. It's at Novocaine. I understand. <laughs> Hold on. I'll drink to that. Okay. Okay. So basically what it amounts to is you can have a 2015 Dodge Challenger and then you see the 2020. And aside from the driving lights, which are a little different yeah. and the headlights, you can't tell the difference. And you know, one thing it's positive to that, the fact that it stayed in production for so long and they've got so many of them out on the road, I think it's the best representation of a kind of a classic design of the original Challenger. Mm -hmm. The Mustang has come back with cars that resemble somewhat the early Mustangs. Camaros, forget it. it it's okay. But the Challenger, yeah, like side windows that are only yeah. this high, chop tops. <laughs> yeah, but the Challenger, I think, is 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 the best looking mm -hmm. of the current pony car crop. However, it is also the heaviest, but it's got the Hemi, and that makes it one of the quicker. Oh, it's got the SRT eights, and you've got the vehicles that are. The, I mean, fuel inject. Well, I don't know about fuel injected, but they've got basically the. You're right. The Hemis that like the. Um, the cars in there that are just so powerful. Yeah. I mean, the Hellcat, the Red Line. The rockets, they are. Yeah. The Hellcat, yeah, the, the, the Red Line cars, the all sorts, even the uh, Demons. Yeah, there you the go. Demon, there you go. The Demon. Uh, so there's, there, they've got some pretty powerful cars. I mean, yeah. you could, and there are add ons you can do to get your more. Uh, horsepower over a thousand, which is to me mind blowing. Yeah. You just, for a production streetcar that you buy off the showroom floor, the last time anyone did that was when Chrysler would sell you a race car. All you had to do is pick the right part number, and you got right. yourself a race car, street legal. You bought it off the showroom at the dealership. It was a regular production order. No big deal. And the guys that kick themselves now for not ordering that $400 option Hemi are, you know. <laughs> but that was a lot of money back then when the whole car only cost 2700 Right. Absolutely. And that was the thing with the pony cars when they came out. They were to be affordable that everybody could pick one up pretty pretty reasonable. And that's why the, the parents were buying them for their, their kids and 
you know, as I've seen on some things, they called it the secretary's car yeah. and that, the Mustang. And, you know, it was a kind of a sporty looking two door, but yet you can ha hold four people in it. And that was what was coming out to, uh, to compete with some of the, you know, obviously it took over the, the Mustang took over the Falcon, which had the four doors or the two doors, but, um, but yet, you know, it was something that was affordable to the masses. And that's why the kids were picking them up. And that's why when I was, uh, you know, learning to drive in that, a lot of the, the guys and, and that would buy the Mustang. So they were, they were still reasonable to pick up and, and soup up and, and do what you wanted to with them. And the early 60s and stuff, you, can, you could do all that and put the bigger engines in it and the manual transmissions and soup them up, even though most of them came with six cylinders. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Returning. You know what's interesting if you go to car shows, and I was um, at one within the last year where <laughs> – I would actually <laughs> would actually go to the car show and there's a Mustang, 60, 67 or 68 Mustang. Yeah. And it was your typical driver. But then the guy raised the hood and the entire place stopped, turned around and took a look at it. You know why? Was it the fact that it had some big Ford V8 in it? No, it had an original Ford six cylinder engine in it. And so many people have bought those cars, taken out the six, crammed in a V8, uh, and thought it was great, and they are. But to see an actual six-cylinder engine in a 67 or 68 Mustang is just right. like, wow. I yeah. completely forgot they made them that way. Yeah, and because of that, some of the six-cylinder cars now are going up in value, and one of the hot setups on those six-cylinder cars is you buy the Australian six-cylinder cylinder head. It is cross-flow. The intake manifold is separate from the exhaust or separate from the cylinder head. The US version, the intake manifold is integral and it only takes a single barrel carburetor. The Australian version had two barrel and four barrels and oh. the exhaust was on the opposite side. So it was a cross flow design, more efficient, more horsepower. And if memory serves me, uh, some of them were even available in aluminum. So lighter in weight. Well, I know, I know Australia had, in the Chrysler category, they had a Hemi 6. Yes. Which was basically your six-cylinder engine, again, in the, in the Hemi uh, deal, but you could put numerous carburetors on it. I mean, you could just have, a, have yourself a good old show. And down in, down in Australia, you got to give them credit, what they did with the six-cylinder engines down there, you know, would never be thought of here. You, you, you know, six-cylinder engines like Peggy said, are the ones that the secretaries drove around in, right. uh, as opposed to down there, they were competitive. But yeah, they were competitive and they were the engine of choice unless you had a lot of money because gas wasn't cheap there like it is here or was here. Now we're almost on par, but, and they taxed vehicles differently down there and the size of the engine would make a difference. Yeah. But anyway, all right, pony cars and everything else going on. Uh, latest news, and we'll end it with this, Fontana Speedway. They've submitted plans to downsize the facility and sell off some of the property. Going really? From, going from a super speedway to a half mile oval. And rumor is they will lose the drag strip and the road course as well. Now the road course is operational almost every weekend with track attack days and driver days. It's going to be interesting to see how this is uh, – perceived by the motorsports community here in Southern California, but the Penske group, they're looking at getting more races and the super speedway just isn't doing it. Mm. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm hot rod, Bob, you've had gas, the evening edition. Oh. You're doing and Peggy, <laughs> and Peggy's still suffering from it. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh. Now I got to turn the fan on in the house. Oh, well, that's another story altogether. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Thank you for listening and watching. If you are watching us on YouTube, don't forget, Two Tired Guys Productions. Check out our YouTube page, Talking About Cars, Gas. It's all there. Talking About Cars in the top 100 in Europe right now. Help us out. Check it out. By the way, subscribe. You can subscribe. It doesn't cost a thing. And basically what it is, you'll get to know when a new podcast uploads. So uh, we've got some great shows coming up. Um, 
So keep an eye on that. And uh, we just uploaded a bunch of them. Uh, we got a new one coming up this week, later this week. On Thursday, uh, we'll have uh, Fast Jack Beckman coming up on the radio.com, KNX1070.com, Apple Podcasts, um, listen-only channel. And, of course, we'll have that coming up a little later on. And, of course, we have um, Steph Holloway from I Drive a Classic. That is just uploaded to our Two Tired Guys channel on YouTube. So right. check that out as well. Again, subscribe and become a patron. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in for gas. Thanks for being a gasaholic. Gas, the great American auto scene, brought to you by Service Tech Equipment, where you can get all the equipment you need for the shop you have to work on your car. Take care, folks. Good night. Thanks, Good Randy. Night. Thanks, Peg. So long and so long, FM. That's right. <laughs> Take care, guys. Good night. <laughs>